Hello everyone and welcome to another Roaring Records tutorial. Today we're going to be continuing our discussion of beat making. This time we're going to be talking about the step entry method that is capable using the pencil tool in the piano roll of Soundtrap. So here is Soundtrap in a blank file. And we want to start by making a uh, drum set which we've got here in our vanilla part if you don't know how to add that you can use the add track button and select drum beat in order to be able to have a drum set part right here now um, we're gonna limit ourselves to just one measure of beat making for right now so I'm gonna take my cycle tool and reduce it to one measure and so that I have a region to write in I'm actually going to hover my mouse over this first measure and just click one time. And when I click one time, my pattern tool comes up. Now we discussed the pattern tool in the previous exercise. Today, we're gonna discuss the piano roll and step entry using the piano roll and the different things that we have access to in the piano roll. So you'll notice first off that this is a very limited amount of space to do any work in Soundtrap. So if we want to really get in and write some notes, then we're going to increase the size of that measure. Now you'll notice as we increase the size of this measure, the number of grid lines that we have increases. So much like our pattern mode that we were in previously that had 16 boxes, at this level of magnification, we see 16 boxes available to us here. But potentially, uh, your Soundtrap may be adding more than 16 boxes. For instance, if you click on this little cog right here and you have automatically adjust grid size, now there are 64 little boxes for you to be able to use with the pencil tool. Now, I'm going to tell you, 64 boxes is a lot for a beginning Soundtrap user. So I would highly recommend that you click the cog and move this down to 1 16th grid size revolution, which will limit the number of grid marks that you have to the 16 within a measure. This is a great starting point for early musicians. So if you're just getting used to this, limit yourself to the 16. There are millions and millions of cool rhythms that you can make limiting yourself to these 16. When you get more advanced, you'll figure out how to use 32 and 64 divisions and stuff like that, maybe even triplets and swing. But for now, we just want to be able to see 16. Now, on the left side of the screen, you'll see piano keys. These piano keys represent different drum sounds. For instance, there's a kick drum. There's a snare drum. We'll turn this volume down just a little bit. Kick and snare. And there's hi-hats, toms, electronic at least, um, in this case, synthesized toms. So we have all the different sounds. So each row coming across the screen is a different sound and you'll notice they follow the piano key colors here's a light and a dark and a light and a dark and a light light dark light dark light dark light light that follows the piano grid so that you can see what sound it is that you're working on when you move across now the columns or the up and down that's your rhythmic timing and one thing i would recommend right now is to go ahead and click this button this little magnet which is automatically snap to the grid. So that means that anything that you write in here in a moment is going to automatically snap to the grid. The grid lines are the good, accurate rhythmic points. There, there may be times in the future when you're more advanced that you want to experiment being outside the grid lines, but for now, we want to stay with the grid lines. So again, those settings are COG 16, and a lit up magnet to snap to the grid. Now, the first tool I have access to in my piano roll is a pointer tool. 
and it moves notes. But I don't have any notes yet, so I want to add notes. So to add notes, I'm going to come over here and click on my pencil tool. Now, my pencil tool allows my click to equal the entry of one note. So if I come to C1 down here at the very beginning, I've added a bass note. Now I'm going to shorten the duration of that bass note by grabbing the end, left clicking, and dragging it back. Because I don't want it to last more than a sixteenth note. It's not going to because of the sound duration, but I don't want the length of that note to be longer. So here we go again. If we want to put notes on the steady beat, it's a little harder to see where the steady beats are this time, but this is box one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. Now if I listen to that, I will have a bass kick on every metronome hit. So there we've created the basis for a four on the floor beat. If we wanted to add some snare parts, we could hit snares. And again, now we have a back beat. We could add some hi-hats to get our club sound. Now here I have clicked this note on the wrong, so if, the wrong spot. So if I click and drag on the note, highlight that note, click and drag, now I can move the note. So now we have the club sound. If I want to go for more of a rock sound, I can add some more hi-hats in. A little bit more rock-esque sound for sure. Now, if I go back to my uh, pointer tool and say I want to fill in all these notes right here. Well, there are a couple ways I could do it. I could certainly use my pencil and go back and click them all in, but it might be that I could copy and paste all of these hi-hats. And there are a couple ways to do that, but the easiest one is if you're on a Mac computer, you hold the Option key. If you're on a Windows computer, it's Alt, and you click and you drag that over. Now I have written all the missing notes in there. which is kind of a cool, fast technique for getting some copy and paste um, exercises done. That's not exactly the sound that I want, so I'm going to undo that. Now, you'll notice also when you hit Option on a Mac or um, Alt on your Windows keyboard that it automatically switches from the pointer to the pencil tool. So if you don't want to constantly go up here and switch back and forth, you can hold Alt and begin penciling. I need to know where my clap is. There it is. So now we have a new rhythm. So we're finding a more interesting rhythm now to be able to do by adding all sorts of different notes available to us. So there are three hi-hats, or three toms, I should say. So let's see if I can go in and add, there's my Alt key. And I've done that all with the pencil tool. Now, there are a few more tools that you see out here. The V tool. When you click on the V, you'll notice that a white bar appears in the middle of each one of these lines. That's your velocity or the strength at which the note is to be attacked. If you select all, then we can adjust the velocity of all of them at the same time by clicking and dragging either up or down. And you'll notice as I drag down, the intensity lowers 
If I drag up, the bar fills up. So this is a full velocity drum hit. Whereas if I click and drag down, this is more of a mild velocity. So you as the artist have to decide what the appropriate velocity is. Now, you can certainly go in and lower the velocity on an individual note. This would begin to create more rhythmic pulsing. And create different strengths of each note. It makes it sound more uh, human if not all the velocities are the same. And finally, your last trash can tool over here is available to help you delete notes. If I didn't like those tom notes, then I could go in and get rid of the tom notes just by clicking. Or if you wanted to trash a whole measure, you could highlight them all and click and vanish. That measure is gone. So again, you have your pointer tool for moving, your pencil tool for writing, your velocity tool for changing the intensity of the attack on the note, and finally your eraser tool to delete um, or erase different notes. I hope you have found this helpful. Join us for more tips next time.